My name's Hoodwill, and you may know me as an author and narrator for The Wraith Times, or as the audio guy for creators like Arsenal Pass, The Manor Podcast, and Fabled Academy. You may have seen me posting card images for Fabrary that I clean up during preview seasons, or know me as the guy who can't stop playing Bolton on Cardboard Cast. If you only know me from this shirt at tournaments, or don't know me at all, it's because I don't top eight events. Enter this guy. The first ever flesh and blood world champion, Michael Hamilton, is here to help me learn from my mistakes through video recaps. Maybe you'll learn something too in this series called Hoodwill and Hamilton. Yeah, pretty, pretty, very racy because Dash can't really block your attacks very well because of your ability since most of her attacks are, or most of her blocking cards are attacks. Yep, yeah, that's exactly right. So the, I guess the, <clears throat> I haven't really played into the new dash list yet um mm -hmm. with pulse wave harpoon and um the nitro mech so uh mm -hmm. shouts out to randall uh for being my opponent in this game this is actually a um a two header game because the first match is kind of quick um Hi. Uh, he, he, <laughs> he draws into some reds uh pretty early so it's it's kind of one-sided but i think there's still good things to talk through um decision wise so i appreciate randall uh, being a good sport through these matches. And uh, I actually found him through the Manor Podcast Discord. So I uh, was really awesome. happy. Yeah, I was really happy he decided to jump on some gameplay with me. Um, yep. So the first one, and we can go through it kind of quick because it's, you'll see, it's, it's kind of one sided. But yeah, the matchup um, has generally always been kind of just like a race. <laughs> Um, for the reasons you said, and I was treating it that way in this, in these games, just to see how it played. Like if that, if the play would be the same, uh, mm -hmm. I'm going through my sideboard here so you can see. Okay. So I got rid of some of the blue cards that I'm testing. I think I got rid of like yellow valiant thrust as well. And then I took out the defense reactions. So this is, this is still like a Bolton list that I'm playing around with. Um, since Spirit of Irina came out. Mm -hmm. um, before we start, I guess, like we're already started, but did you post the link somewhere so I can run the video or or do you have, sorry, did you upload the videos or do you want to just run them on your side? I didn't upload the videos. I can send you the link for the deck though if you want to follow along that way. Uh, that works, yeah, that helps. Okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry, you went. You were already through the sideboarding, but you got the soul shields, the sync blows, and mm -hmm. what were the blues that you and cut? the um, I think blue illuminate and okay. yellow valiance. Okay, we can go back a sec if we want to look. Yeah, 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 let's go back. I think that was it. Yellow valiance. Blue yep. Soul Shield, Sink Below, Blue Illuminate. And you submit 63 here. I think that's it. Yep, 63. Okay. And that's just indecision on my part, slash still wanting to see more cards to test with. Mm. And yeah, Yellow Valiance. And one Battlefield Blitz, looks like. Okay. So you're going first here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So <clears throat> one thing I'm thinking through is like, how do I hang on to this V, but still do some stuff on my first turn? Um, mm -hmm. And I think what I choose here is pretty straightforward. I, I thought about this afterwards and thought maybe I should have just hung on to the steel hand instead of trying to get six more damage in by using Steel Hand, banishing from Soul, and then coming in with Raiden. Um, like, maybe I should have just arsenaled 
the V held on to the steel hand and kept a card in soul instead of like allowing him to filter more. Because he said his hands were bad, and I think I, I get lucky with the fact that his second hand that he draws into is bad here as well. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so I'm curious to hear your thoughts on it, but I think the line I choose is probably more aggressive than it needs to be for turn one since I was able to get a soul. So I think... Uh, well, we're paused here. I think you should definitely play the steel hand here. Getting one damage and an extra card in your soul on turn one or turn zero is great. And it's not really costing you anything because once you play the steel hand, like, like or if you don't play, you're just going to draw back up anyway. And steel hand might be slightly better than a random card, but it's not a point of damage plus a card in soul better. So I would definitely play the steel hand. And then the follow-up question is, do we use Bolton's ability to give the engulfing light go again so we can attack with the Raiden for three? Yep. And on that part, I probably wouldn't do that because at that point, we're trading a card in soul to attack with the Raiden, and they'll probably be able to block the Raiden out or at least block for three. Probably block out the three plus the one from the Bolton ability, but if they have like an item, they wouldn't. They would take one more damage. But I wouldn't... I wouldn't even want to give up a card in soul for one damage and it's not even a guaranteed damage. So I'd play the courageous still hand here, get the plus one damage and then arsenal the V and just pass with two cards or yeah, two cards in soul with two and soul. Yep. Cool. Because like some amount of the time they're just going to have two more cards to block the, the raid in. So you get zero damage for and it costs a card in soul. And some of the time you're going to get one damage through and cost a card in soul. So like giving it go against worth somewhere between zero and one damage. Right. Yeah, it's that. Oh, it's that sweet, oh. sweet they, Raiden. Uh, yeah, we just they didn't block at all. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Sometimes you get lucky like that too. But yeah, it's the the sweet Raiden value, man. It's just what I want. I want it so bad. Having charged for the turn, sliding that thing up just feels so good. But mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah. Uh, continuing with two and soul was my thought after this turn. Like, oh, I probably I was thinking, like, what would Michael do? I he would probably tell me to just continue with two soul. So. Yeah. I don't quite remember what he does here, but I remember it. The turn flipping back to me and being like, oh, okay. Pitches two reds to play a plasma purifier. Yeah. So, no blues. It's kind of unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. It stands, it's. A, I'm. I'm already a little surprised to see plasma purifier from the dash's side. Um, because like I was saying, she doesn't block you that well because all of her attacks can't block. Mm -hmm. So, it's going to be hard for her to have enough time to do all the item stuff. Yeah. To the opponent's credit, I think he. Um, we talked a little bit after. And he said, um, it's hard to know what the Bolton plan is going to be. He knew that I was going to be Bolton going into it, but I think he planned on sabers. Okay. Um, and he also said that a lot of times from his side, the matchup is a race because sabers is like the default assumption. I, I think that's fair. I, I would expect, like, even against Sabres, you probably wouldn't want the the Purifier still, because you give up so much damage for it right away. But I, I, I don't know. I'm not... Definitely not a dash expert, but that that's kind of, like... I guess we'll see how... Well, we can't... We won't really see how good it would be against Sabres, because you're on raid. Yeah. I, I, even getting the Purifier so early, it doesn't seem like it's going to do very much this game. This V turn seems pretty disgusting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I enjoy playing V more than Lumina.
Seek is another card I have in here uh, to test. Mm. Yeah, I remember you talking about that last last session. Or was it? It was last session, right? That you're talking about Seek. Um. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, that was the Reinar game. Yeah. Pulse Wave's a cool card. Yeah. I think it's it's not very impactful when it's like early in the chain like that, but it definitely forced some decisions uh, in the next game. So yeah, I mean, even like even with me not blocking, I'm only at 36 right now. I think it's just he ran into some unfortunate hands here. Mm -hmm. So this hand is kind of awkward. There's not really a super efficient way to use your whole hand. Yeah, I th think I beacon. I'm assuming I grab Lumina. I don't remember. Lumina and Snapdragon Scalers it. Mm hmm. Okay. And then you can tunic Battlefield Blitz also. That makes sense. Because you're going to use your last card in Soul here. Yeah. Okay. Can we go back to the start of the turn for a second? Mm -hmm. So I guess I want to add up what we're getting there. So we're we are playing Express, which is four, Beacon's gonna deal one, Battlefield's gonna deal five, right? It's one for five. Mm -hmm. And then we're getting two Lumina attacks. Actually, you know what? No. Why in Lumina attack? Because this yeah, we can't I, give Raiden go again. Yeah, I don't think. I honestly don't remember what I do now. Because yeah, two soul would be necessary to tutor and get the second swing for Lumina. Yeah, so getting Lumina, you can arsenal the Lumina. You can attack with Battlefield Blitz and Raiden still, and that's fine. Using the Snapdragon Scalers. Mm hmm. I, yeah, there's a line that I take like that in the next game. I don't think I do that here. I really don't remember what I do here. Yeah, I guess I'm, try, I'm trying to compare it to a different potential option of playing the Seek Enlightenment this turn. Oh, okay, that's right. Go. I grab a V. I see. And you yeah. just choose to arsenal the V instead of the Lumina. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this ends up being 13 damage plus an arsenal of whatever card we want. And slightly awkward draw of Lumina on the V turn when I don't have Spirit yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah, you can always just charge it. Mm -hmm. Eat the damage, eat the damage. 
Yeah. I was talking crap about the plasma purifier, but with the huge high octane turn for a million action points, it seems very good. Yeah. <laughs> So I was doing some math to try to figure out what the best turn is here while mm -hmm. the opponent was comboing off. I think it's just charging both cards here. Charging two cards, the non-bolting blade and charging the other two. Because then you get five from the V, you get nine from the bolting blade and five from the Raiden, which is 19. Um, and, and that gives you two cards and soul to give two things go again. Yeah, I think... I don't remember what I do, um, but I was trying to think of the number of chains that we would get. So one, two, three. Um, I think I opted to hold the steel hand since it's a red. Um, it gives me plus three. If I was to charge the steel hand um, along with the Lumina, I would only get three chain links, right? So it'd be V yep. and then Raiden and then Bolting Blade. So yeah. the plus one on each one that I'd get from steel hand equals three anyway. And I mm -hmm. think I was valuing the plus three that I could just give to any one of them on steel hand better. If I'm trying to force a hit, like if he tries to block out, um, something just to push damage through. So that's, that's kind of how I was considering it. Uh, yeah, I don't so remember what I do though. You, you might be right. I might just do that. So it, it's a plus three in damage either way, whether right. you charge it or you hold it. Right. So like holding it in hand, you're like kind of hiding information from him. He doesn't know that you're going to have this plus three combat trick. Yep, exactly. The only problem with that is then you don't have enough action points to go three chain links wide because you don't have any cards in soul currently. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I think I realized that also. So let's okay. let's see what I do here. And in general, when your V is three cards wide, for the most part, unless you have like a really important on hit to force through, it's going to be better to charge the steel hand because you're at some point you're banking a bolt in activation or one point of value somewhere. And it looks like you do go ahead and charge both cards. I did. Yep. Good job, past Will. You were smart. <laughs> And then here with this hat activation, I don't think it's bad to activate hat here, but if you were going to activate hat here, you should block with it the previous turn. Because it's uh, you didn't get your value out of the one battle warrant on it. Right, yeah. And then my thought for playing that instead of Raiden was just one more point of value. Sure. Yeah, so not too many interesting decision points in that game. Pretty one-sided. Um, yeah. Yeah. Did you have anything else to add or before we flip to the next game? One thing I did notice, this is kind of on your opponent's side, was when he blocked with a, an attack and pumped your thing up to from five to six. Mm-hmm. If you like, there's nothing you can do about it, but from your opponent's side, a lot of the time they will block that with their two, three block attacks instead of like spacing them out between two attacks. It'll save them like a point of life, basically. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? I think so. Did he, we can look at it real quick. Yeah. If we go back for a second, yeah. I think. Was it somewhere in here? <laughs> 
Uh, it's the first attack you play this okay. chain. Yeah, so here when you play the V and they block with Magnetic Shockwave and no other attacks, I would be inclined to believe my opponent doesn't really want to block very much if they're not blocking that with a second three block attack. Because if they block another three block attack on something later, it's going to give something else plus one and they're already giving that plus one. So they might as well block for six there if they're able to. Right, exactly. Yeah, just to cover up the additional damage that Bolton's adding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I guess like the only the only that's that's my last note is like it's probably a mistake from them, but it's also something that like you can kind of think about if they're blocking like that and they're an opponent that like knows Bolton pretty well or has played the matchup a few times, and that, that probably means they don't want to block very much this turn. Which again, it doesn't matter when they're at four, but that's just like a small thing you could pick up on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good call out. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Um, so to sum up from this game, I guess, um, being aware of turn one, um, banking soul versus letting the opponent filter, um, blocking with equipment before you plan to use the equipment and, yeah. um, I think those are the major takeaways. Nothing interesting math wise, like with beacon or anything like that. Yeah. There was that one turn that we kind of went through pretty quickly where like you ended up beaconing to arsenal Illumina mm-hmm. or not Illumina uh, V. The v. And I think there was another, I think there was potentially another line here where you play the seek enlightenment. So, so I guess if you go, Use Tunic to play Seek Enlightenment, play Express Lightning for seven, and then you can use Bolton to give it go again and swing with the sword and deal, deal 10 damage, Arsenal, Beacon, and have potentially a card in Soul because if the Express Lightning hits, then the it'll go to Soul because of the Seek Enlightenment. Mm-hmm. I th- think that line's probably worse. It's 10 damage and 10 damage and giving you a Beacon in soul versus the line you took use snapdragon scalers and was 12 13 damage and end with 13. a v and soul yeah. but it, you it used snapdragon scalers and you left with no cards in soul so like beacon plus a card in soul is kind of similar to uh Snaps. or sorry having beacon in arsenal and having a card in soul is kind of similar to having whatever card you want in arsenal though you can't exactly get v with the beacon and use it that same turn but. Right. <clears throat> I I do think I do think this line was probably better, but it's like kind of hard to evaluate the ex- the exact numbers on it. Where this was thirteen points of damage, and you use Snapdragon Scalers, whereas the other lines 10, 10 points of damage. You probably end with a card in Soul, and you get to keep Snapdragon Scalers. Still have snaps, yeah, and Beacon yeah. and Arsenal, yeah. So that's just like kind of. I think this is kind of a discussion point, but again, the game the game's almost over here, and Arsenal V means you're not like particularly worried about not having a card in Soul next turn. So yeah, and then my draw would have been uh, the same. So if I had had Beacon, um, let's see what could I have done. If you had Beacon, you would have had no charge card, right. so it would have been pretty bad. Yeah. But... Yep. <clears throat> Yeah, that one's tricky to evaluate. Yeah, I guess the 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 risk of not drawing a charge card is something I hadn't really considered. So this is just this is game two. This is game two. Yep, and I think uh, we can start it from here because I don't remember how exactly I side. I think I side the same way. Okay. Spoilers, there's no Nitro Mech in this game. I was kind of upset. I really yeah, wanted they, to see they, it happen. They have to have the Mechanologist hat to do the Nitro Mech. Because it has to be all four Mech pieces. Yeah. Yeah. So, m- most, I don't think it's super common in Dashless now, but I don't think it's like. It's definitely something they can't do. 
or they can do. Yeah, so he's running crown here, so mm -hmm. not going to see it. And yeah, I don't know enough about Dash to know if that's correct into a Saber's assumption. Yeah, I, I I don't know either. So right here, playing this rising solar tide cost us and our swan didn't get any any value through since we returned zero. Right. So probably I, just should have kept it. Yeah, maybe you go take flight into Raiden, or you just go take flight, leave your card in soul, and pass. Okay. If you so, go... Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I, I was going to say, if you go take flight into Raiden, and they block it with two cards, then I could consider using your one soul to attack with the Rising Solar Tide, because it's going to leak some damage and go back to soul. But I, I wouldn't just go... I wouldn't just attack with the rising solar tide like that because you gave up an arsenal and didn't get any damage through sure yeah that makes sense um and just quick note we would keep the soul either way because take flight has go again from the charge so we wouldn't have to burn a soul to do that but yeah i agree yeah, so, so the line i was talking about burning a soul would be take flight into raiden and then if they block the raiden with two cards oh, oh the raiden the, i see then they'll only have one card left in hand and then maybe it's worth it to play the rising solar tide right i gotcha okay um yeah. but playing it oh sorry go ahead no you're good i was gonna say playing it into three cards they're almost always gonna be able to block for six there yeah and i guess looking at this hand um i think i opt to use the yellow to pay for both take flight and valiant um but had i had the solar tide I could have used the yellow to pay for that and then arsenaled the Valiant for a future turn. So I'd be carrying an arsenal through each turn. That's like without me blocking if we're still playing the race game plan here. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking if I had kept that arsenal, how it would progress. Um, I'm also not sure if going first is the right choice to always i mean if we're racing here um i don't know if i want to be first for the soul or second because this is an aggro matchup yeah in, in general i think you should be defaulting to going second against dash it can be kind of tricky because sometimes if she goes first she gets to load some items and sometimes like load items and play another item which is pretty rough if you're going yeah second she just starts with an extra item but like if, if you go second and she doesn't have an item it's very good to be going second i need to do the math to figure out what percentage of the time dash might get two out on turn one but i can't imagine it's all that high so so yeah i do take the line to go Take flight, raid and valiant, which is fourteen. Yeah, which which is solid, but still no arsenal. So, like I was saying, I guess. Oh yeah, I ran into an issue here just with Talishar. It wouldn't let me play that action or whatever. So we we redid the turn, but and that fixed it. Yeah, it. I guess it disconnected, but it didn't like give me the disconnection message. So I'm not sure what happened. But um, how I'm not really solid on the best way to calculate arsenal value. Yeah. So I think like assuming you get a player art like. Your arsenal is kind of just like whatever the value of the card is when you play it. So like Rising Solar Tide costs one resource and an action point for five damage. 
So it's kind of worth three, basically, by the function of an action point's worth one. Sure. Every damage is worth one, and a resource is worth one. Which I think is like kind of like simplistic, but like that's kind of close to what is the true value of everything. So that's kind of like that's kind of like my shortcut to doing it and on most cards that are as simple as rising solar tide. And then it has like some on hit, but like, that's not that important, but like in general, every card in a class constructed deck is where somewhere between on average is worth between three and four points of value right. on its own usually. So like if it's a red card, it's probably somewhere near there. Yeah. And I guess, I probably am tripping myself up because in a deck like Bolton, where most of the damage is like, you know, it's not split damage. It's not surprise damage. Um, it's not like usually on hit taxing damage unless they're blocking with attack actions. It just gets boosted. It's like mostly physical damage. Mm -hmm. It's, it's stuff like, how should I weigh this arsenaling this versus my opponent blocking now or uh like turn one obviously i still have lessons to learn on turn one stuff like that i might be complicating it more in my head but for cards yeah, like I beacon is more what i am thinking about or cards that like if i was to arsenal like a seek or um, like the rising solar tide that might have a better opportunity of hitting and putting cards in soul. Like there's the face up damage, like you're talking about between three and four per card, but then also, I mean, am I just adding one point for the soul? It's yeah, conditional. I, I, so I don't, uh, I would in the past, I've I kind of calculated that as like half. I, I would say a card in soul is worth about one point of value. But conditional, though, like... But conditional, like, you kind of have to, like, look at your opponent and, like, kind of, like, if it's, like, dash, dash doesn't have a lot of trouble blocking this, but five's kind of a weird break point. So, like, if they're blocking for six, you're getting an extra point of value because you're getting an extra... Like, if you're getting two cards, it's probably worth six. And if you're getting, like, a card and an equipment, that's... There's, like... Like any, the block value of the equipment's too, but like also like getting the equipment out at a certain time could be worth slightly more than that. It's usually not worth a full extra point, but it is like it's two points plus they lose some flexibility. If that does that make sense? Yeah, and I I guess weighing what your opponent is likely to block with trips me up a little bit too. Like in dash, I know it's most likely going to be an attack action. So I'm going to get the blocking benefit. But against like Runeblade or Wizard who can just block with actions mostly. Yeah, I... Is different. <laughs> we're like blazing through this game too. So if you want to stop and go back at any point, just let me know. I know we're kind of talking over things. Um, I, we can kind of let Dash do her thing. I don't think it makes sense to block any of the pistols here in your hands. Pretty good, but maybe we should pause here for a second. Sure. So I think, like, in terms of evaluating damage, so, like, Bolton's hero power is when they block with the attack, your things get plus one if you've charged this turn. Mm -hmm. um, that is kind of hard to evaluate because it doesn't actually increase the value of... Or, like, the way I would look at it is it's not increasing the value of your hands at all it just means if your opponent has a hand that wants to block with an attack action then you're kind of lowering the value of their hand because when they block with that card it becomes it's suddenly their their one card's blocking two points instead of blocking three which isn't actually what the numbers say the numbers say your attack gets bigger but like essentially their card's saving them two life by blocking with it so it's saving them three right so bolton similar to what i center does uh uh has a way of decreasing the value of your opponent's cards sometimes. And Reinar also has something similar where when he intimidates a card your opponent wants to block with, he's lowering the value of their hand because they can't use their hand as efficiently. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really hard to like quantify those into a number. 
I think like it's worth if if they didn't want to block you anyway, it's it's worth zero. If they weren't going to block with that card anyway, then like you can it's it's literally, it's just worth nothing if they weren't wanting to block that. And then when they do block it, it's worth what or when they did want to block, it's worth like whatever their hand whatever the value of their hand becomes versus what it would have been if you didn't have that ability to interfere with their blocking or make their blocking more less efficient. Right. And I, I and go ahead. go ahead. No, you're good. I was I was gonna say after the game you can kind of calculate those and see what they would have been once you know their whole hand and stuff. You can see what the value they could get from using their hand perfectly efficiently was if you didn't have your ability versus what the value is because of your ability. In the case of Bolton, it's usually going to be one difference because you get plus one from your thing. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's only that plus one when they needed or when, when in order to use their hand efficiently, they had to block with attack actions. Yeah. And I, I don't necessarily know that it's ever correct to plan out a line banking on the fact that they would block unless it's like a lethal situation. Mm-hmm. When they have to block. Yeah, um, I, I agree. Yeah, like I'm never going to sequence something differently unless I'm presenting lethal damage. If I'm uh, thinking that I want to get something because they're blocking or like I'm banking on value from them blocking or something. Yeah. And in terms of like valuing, evaluating it on your turn, like how much value you give the hero power i would think about it close to zero but slightly more than zero so if like two lines are tied for like 13 points of value and one of them is one where you attack with one more card so like if they block with attack actions like i'd probably lean towards that but i think like evaluating it at slightly more than zero but significantly less than one is like a pretty safe bet and when I guess it changes if your attack has an on hit like this bolt of courage the fact that your bullet ability is going to give it plus one is like super relevant here but, yeah it is but just to just to make sure I understand what you're saying so let's go going back to the example you just gave two different lines 13 damage each does one of them require the opponent blocking a certain way to get the 13 damage or you're saying regardless that, of how they block yeah you're saying it's if it, if they're both worth thirteen, assuming your opponent doesn't block at all, then right. like, I guess if one of them's like playing a charge card, one of them's not playing a charge card, then you should probably do the one line that plays a charge card, even if you're going to net the same amount of cards and sell at the end of your turn, because right. it makes it you'll get that value if they do block. There's a potential but, for more value, right? Yeah, but like a line where you block with three cards and play an illuminate for thirteen versus a line where you do something involving charging a card and it's going to be worth 12 and it, but it's harder for them to block. In most matchups, I would just do the 13 guaranteed over like the 12 with the potential of like Bolton's ability. And I think it's like in general, it's just better to, I guess like, let's say it's like wounding blow instead of illuminate because it's, it adds more complexity to factor in illuminates on hit or maybe express lightning, no charge versus an express lightning charge line. And maybe the no charge line is worth 13 and the charge line is worth 12. Then I, I would, I would lean towards the, the no charge line, even if they do block the charge line, you get 13 because you're getting guaranteed value out of one way versus potential for upside the other way. Right. Yeah. And the only time I think it would be the opposite default is if you're presenting lethal. Because then it's more likely that they're going to block every single chain. So it's not just going to be a difference of like 12 and 13. It's going to be a difference of the 13 guaranteed or like 15. Because they're going to have to block once each chain. Yeah, yeah. And that that's also still only against the decks that have a lot of attacks that they would be blocking with. Even yeah. against like Briar, I'd kind of like be careful about thinking about things like that. Because she has a lot of non-attacks. But like Dash definitely is almost only blocking with attacks. I think she has one or two non-attack actions that she can block with the the zero for three pump spell and the high octane. But I think outside of that, she doesn't have any non-attacks that block. So then, 
going back to the example of going back to the conversation around arsenaling, mm -hmm. um, is there anything that I can look at that the opponent is doing? I guess it's just how they're blocking for that turn that would tell me like, okay, yes, I should play this now because it's more likely to get the on hit or in, like instead of arsenaling it for the next turn because I don't know how they're going to block the next turn. Oh, uh, so you should almost always play it if you're going to be wasting your action point, unless it's turn zero. Turn zero, they get a block with their cards and then draw back up. Every other turn of the game, if they block with cards, they don't get a draw back up. So turn zero is the only time you should be arsling instead of playing cards. Okay. If you have the action point anyway. If you don't have the action point, then it's like, if it's like costing a card in soul to play the card, then sometimes it's worth it, sometimes it's not. It kind of depends on some other factors. But for for the most part, uh, turn zero, you should lean pretty heavily towards arsling it. And any other time in the game, you should be playing it because you don't want to waste your action point. Cool. Yep. Okay. All right. And then I think we're good to go for this turn. This. This hand looks pretty strong with like Bolt of Courage, Steel Hand, and Beacon, but I yeah. don't know how many cards you have in Soul. There's one right now. It's getting two at okay, the top of the I turn here. Yep. So I see him blocking with equipment, and he's sitting on five cards. So he does not want to block this turn. Yeah, like. it doesn't seem like he wants to block at all. But I was also thinking maybe, okay, so this is just Bolt of Courage. Maybe he's just trying to not pump up the Bolt of Courage to give me the draw. But then this chain link kind of tells me, okay, he's sitting on a nice hand. Mm -hmm. So then this this Illumina ends up being very good. You get to use your soul to get the dust blade go again. You have courageous steel hand in case he did block to pump it over to make sure you get to recharge your soul. And then you can attack with Raiden again and then probably play an express lightning and then probably courageous steel hand in arsenal to take flight is what I'd assume. It's the line here. Because you don't have a, any way to get resources for this take flight. Right. Yeah, I'm thinking the same thing. Pump up if I need to to force my Lumina on hit with the Steel Hand. If he blocks, unfortunately, he doesn't <laughs> doesn't ever block. Uh, and yeah, yeah Arsenal the flight at the end. Yeah, I I like how this turn played out. It seemed like the most efficient way to use the hand. And then. We're just hoping somehow we get to get to our turn with take flight and valiant thrust right. and a card to charge and a resource card. Yeah, you know, just uh, just your your typical Bolton hopefulness. <laughs> mm -hmm. After they kept a five card hand with two extra resources from a tech local. Yeah. So this being chain link two is kind of nice. We can just show two threes, and yeah. you can't force us to block anything. And I'm starting to consider what could come next. Mm -hmm. um, and looking at my equipment like, okay. Um... I don't think it's right to do any of this because I don't want to lose Tunic in the event that he plays like T-Bone or something. Sure. But second pulse wave kind of forces decisions. Yeah, so you have to decide between showing him Valiant Thrust and showing him Cour Blue Courageous Steel Hand. Yep. If you show Blue Courageous Steel Hand, then he can force you to block with a two block. And if you show him Valiant Thrust then your turn doesn't really... Your take flight into whatever turn doesn't really work. Right. He takes it. So I, I think I like showing him the steel hand. It's very fortunate that he doesn't take it, though, because that would just be one extra damage that you take. Uh, 
Um, it would be one more damage that I take. Right. Yes. Because it's only blocks too. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. The. I don't remember what I was thinking in the moment of what I wanted him to take, but I was thinking even if he does take the blue, I would at least be able to pay for what I need with um, the yellow. Yeah. And I could still block with like Helm of Sharp Eye if I needed to, to cover up the extra one from Courageous. But then he hits me with a max velocity. <laughs> yeah. So this is actually pretty rough that we haven't blocked with Brave Forge Bracers yet. Because if we had traded our Brave Forge Bracers first counter for two extra life, we'd be at six here. And then. Wait, right, that doesn't help. Never mind. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. it's. Yeah, so um, so the considerations were, for me, um, blocking out with the equipment and a card and still having um, what did I do? It's like blocking out with the cards and doing less or blocking out with the equipment and doing, trying to do one more. So I think this looks like a spot where you just should block with two cards in hand and then you can just play this express lightning for four, two cards in hand plus some equipment because you can't really play the take flight. Ideally, you'd save the tunic to get the third counter if you can live that long so that you can use the tunic to play the take flight off a off a one card hand with an arsenal. You could do take flight and a raid in. So courageous and valiant are 5 6 7 with bracers, 8 with helm. I could take 2 here and go to 2, play the express, keep the tunic counter. Mm -hmm. Um I think I end up taking seven and going to one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm dealing seven. I don't remember what I do. But yeah, that make, what you're saying makes sense to me. Just hold the tuning for another turn. Present four here. Mm -hmm. And then the other option is you could block with the Express Lightning and block with your whole hand, basically. Go to two. Or block with your whole hand plus the Bracers and, st and block out for ten. Your Express Lightning is getting one less point of value because it's blocking for three instead of attacking for four. But maybe you do that and hope that the dash draws into a clunky four-card hand that they can't use efficiently. So I think I think those are the two like best options because I don't see a way to get more than eight points of value out of this or more than nine points of value out of this hand of blocking with Valiant Thrust and Steel Hand and attacking with Express Lightning. So like the options are get nine by attacking with Express Lightning or get eight by blocking with it. Yeah. And okay. you're kind of you're kind of in a spot where some things have to go right, so or go pretty well for you to win this game. So I, I think I might be inclined to just block with everything, and get take the eight points of value and hope that the dashes can't use her four card hand efficiently. So I'm lining stuff up here just to see. Mm -hmm. 
This might be what I end up doing. So this is getting us 10 points of value because we blocked with, we blocked with, uh, what's it called? The three. And then we're playing take flight and a raid in here for seven total. But well, that's the, using our arsenal for 10. Yeah. So my, my Hail Mary with this was the fact that I could still use Helm of Sharp Eye. Okay. So I want, I kept the blue because I could pay for take flight and Helm of Sharp Eye and potentially like if I draw something that cost me one. Okay. Hmm. So if you helm into like a battlefield blitz or something, maybe yeah, like there. like battlefield blitz or uh, red valiant or another um, beacon rising beacon or something, beacon. yeah, beacon. And I hit yellow valiant, so. Additional six is pretty nice here. Mm. But still not enough. He can just go to two. Yeah, and now we're at we're we're at one, so we have to block every pistol, which yeah. is inefficient because yep. we're getting two value out of each card blocking instead of three. Yeah, you can predict the rest of this game. <laughs> yeah, and I guess a couple a, a thing I just noticed there was he blocked with a maximum velocity. So like, if we had chosen to leave him with a four card hand he would not have been able to use the maximum velocity that turn so like maybe that's like enough awkwardness that that we have we get another turn if we just used our whole hand defensively earlier when i was talking about possible mm. possible lines yeah let's rewind that back So here, when we were thinking about how to block this maximum velocity, if we mm -hmm. had just blocked for 10 with the uh, three cards in hand and the Brayford Bracers, and then on our turn, we tick up two next to two and waste our action point and pass, then they draw a second maximum velocity here. Mm -hmm. And they end up blocking with it that when we attack with this hand, because right. we jumped things, and they would not have been able to use the maximum velocity off a four card hand. Because it basically requires a five card hand from dash to use, or, or a tech core, or sometimes both a five card hand with a tech core. But oh, the, oh, the... I see. So you're saying be, they would be crippled potentially by one card, not being able to play it. They'd have to arsenal it, so it would only be a three card turn that they'd come at us with. We'd still have take yeah. flight and arsenal, and then be able to use it with tunic the following turn. Yeah. I yeah. see. Yep. Okay. And. Uh, they wouldn't necessarily have to arsenal it. They could pitch it for one resource, but it, it sure, would sure. it would have it would be pretty crippling for them. Yeah. Okay. All right, you can skip back forward again. To yeah, wherever we were. It's or you're dying to the pistol. Where? <laughs> where I just die for two turns to this pistol. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, that was the big decision turn for the game. I do think the, the home of the sharp eye line is, is interesting, and I didn't see it. So, like, I, I, I don't blame you for going for that. I, I don't know if that was necessarily a mistake, but I do think, like... It's game. I, don't, I, don't, I guess I don't, I don't know what what else would get us there i guess if the right the one card wasn't good enough the yellow valiant thrust red valiant thrust would have put him to one um yeah red valiant thrust uh 
Oh, this T-bone's extra, extra rude. It just yeah, dude. <laughs> eats the bracer, so if they play a four, then we can't block it. Yeah, I don't think it happens this turn, but it happens next turn. I'll just jump ahead. Oh yeah, that's that's my uh, Raiden for zero. <laughs> and then this is it. Yeah. Two pistol shots, and then whatever else they do with their hand. A four, yeah. Yep. <laughs> so Main takeaways from this, I guess, um, going back to what we were just talking about with like Helm being a gamble. Um, do you weigh that against the, like, if you're playing to your outs, where does that sit compared to just blocking out and hoping that they whiff or just have a weak hand so the the helm line helm's like pretty hard to evaluate because there it was basically one resource to draw the valiant thrust um not exactly sure how you should evaluate helm i think like one resource to draw a card is pretty close to how you, how you should evaluate it because most of the time you're getting the a card off of it and then like you just like look at the average value of a card in your deck so like the effective value is somewhere somewhere close to one resource for three points so a plus two when you use it um and then just finding like the right window to use it which i think the line you took was very reasonable and like it did use your resources efficiently Mm -hmm. where you had like the extra stuff anyway it just like was kind of unfortunate you had to block with all your equipment that turn and you also went to one so like you couldn't effectively block the pistol after yeah. that because it's like even if you like stripped one or two more cards from their hand having a blue to load pistol and induction chamber every turn is gonna trade their blue for two cards from your hand yep. and so like you're just kind of in a pretty disadvantaged position if you're at one life against a uh, pistol induction chamber. Um, if I wanted to block more earlier in the game, uh, would that have mattered much? I guess, did you evaluate this matchup as being a race? Yeah, I, I well, I guess like, in every match, you're just trying to get like the most value out of your cards, and because Dash is not very good at blocking you, it's going to be racy because she's having to take more damage than maybe... Like, to play efficiently, she has to take more damage than maybe she would in other spots because her cards aren't very efficient at blocking your attacks. Mm -hmm. So that that's what makes it racy, is that Dash has to take more damage than maybe would be optimal in many other spots so yeah. because of that the matchup's going to be kind of racy but like from hand to hand you should just be looking at maximizing the value of your cards and a lot of the damage you took that game you presented more damage by not blocking so i don't think you should have been blocking more than you did okay this average value per turn damage thrown plus blocked is this right at 18.6? Mm, average value. Uh, 
Doesn't seem like that could be right. Mm. I'd have to go back through. <laughs> Total damage threatened was 52 over six turns. And then you blocked with 5, 10, 12 cards. I'm going to pull up the calculator real quick. I, I think that... 12, 3, 36. So... 36. I'm sure there were some 2 blocks in there, yeah. right? So, there's, so 88 divided by... Divided by 6 is 14.66. That sounds right. That sounds much closer than the 18.6 number it's yeah. giving. 14.6 sounds like... That sounds uh, better. Yeah, I like that, and that that is that is still a very good number. And part of that is inflated by her blocking your attacks with uh, attack, attack action, so they were getting plus one. Yeah, and that's part of why your damage threatened was higher. But yeah, average damage threatened per offensive card five point seven eight. So. Yeah. One other thing, when I'm trying to like evaluate cards in the deck, if they like belong in the deck or I should keep them in the deck, we watched two games where you had Seek Enlightenment in your deck, both games. I still haven't seen you seen a hand where you wanted to cast that card. Yeah. <clears throat> does that and block two also? It probably does. It also does block two. Yeah. yeah. So, and it's a red. So, like, blues that you don't want to cast very often are, like, that's not that hard for them to be, to warn a spot in the deck if you, like, sometimes you cast them and they're very good. But reds, generally, you need to be pretty happy to cast them every so on of the time. So, like, I don't know if you're really, like, um, I guess it's seeming to me like it's probably not worth the inclusion in the deck, but this is a pretty small sample size that I'm getting. I know you're playing more games other than the games that I see, but yeah, that's definitely something you should keep an eye on. If like you're casting it and getting your value out of it, or if it's just like being charged every time you draw it. Cause like you can charge any card. It doesn't have to be right. a red two block. Yeah. So the, I can't remember if we talked about this before the, the conversation of seek started when plunder run was banned. Um, mm -hmm. And at that time, I chose to go with Red Razor, just because that's it's a plus three, cost one, um, also blocks two. It's not light, which is kind of a disadvantage, um, where Seek is a light card. But Seek okay. is heads up information. Um, the reason I'm testing Seek right now is because it it's similar to Razor in that <clears throat> if it hits you, bank a soul. With Razor, if it hits you, get go again. So it's kind of just like you know, you're trading a soul for the go again. It's like the same thing. So it's, I'm testing more just if it makes the opponent block any differently with initial information. And it kind of does. I mean, another reason to run it is because it makes, uh, it makes cards going into soul cheaper. That's like one of the same reasons I run, uh, rising solar tide is because it's mm -hmm. a it's a one for five rising solar tide is like one of the more efficient two card hands that you can have in bolton if you block two or block three you have rising and arsenal pay for it with a, a red or whatever you could block four have it in arsenal tunic pay for it and yeah. five hits goes to soul that's really cheap cost on a card going into soul you don't need yeah, the charge I, card with it. So it's same thing with seek. It just, it turns whatever charge card you have into an engulfing light. Um, yeah. I, I think the biggest thing about rising solar tide is that tunic interaction where you can go use tunic to play and do a one card five with the tunic counter is yeah. pretty solid with like a relevant on hit. Yeah. Yep. And that's, but, uh, obviously one of the crutches of the deck is getting cards in soul. Um, so seek is just another way of, excuse me, making it cheaper. Um, <clears throat> but like I said, razor, I mean, if that hits, it's a similar on hit threat of getting the go again without having to burn soul. So 
I'm inclined to go back to Razor, but it does mean if I hit that on a Lumina turn, it's not going in because it's not light. Yeah, and you do want to make sure your non-light cards are as good as possible. You also can't via the Vanguard uh, your Razors, which is... Yeah, can't V Razors. And I guess if I'm playing Helm, um, I guess it's potentially a little bit better to have Razor than C. Yeah, Raz Razor is much better because you have to close <laughs> the the combat chain to play a an action. Yeah. So. so if I'm looking to Helm, which is mostly on V turns anyway, I think Razor is probably the better include. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah, good points, though. Good info points on that. I probably won't be on Seek for much longer. Um, was there anything else you noticed or like anything matchup specific here to keep in mind that we haven't covered? Anything matchup specific? Um... I don't think so. I think, like... Ultimately, the dash matchup feels like it's kind of just about maximizing your value against their value. And I think this, I think like this, this game kind of like the first game, it felt like most of our turns were pretty efficient. And this game is the dash had some pretty efficient turns and like mm -hmm. we yep. didn't have like the big V turn in this game, I don't think. And then. There was one Lumina turn at the end that was pretty good, but that was like, I just seemed like a lot of the turns were worse. And then that last turn with the the Helm of the Sharp Eye that we kept the three card hand for, or that you kept the three card hand for, I think that that turn was pretty big and it was almost enough, but you were just like too far behind. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Well, I appreciate it. Well, who do you want to see Bolton play into? What, what matchup do you want to see with Bolton? <laughs> uh... Nothing. You don't care about Bolton, probably. <laughs> so I, I think. Oh, the I think the this... minnow isn't built. That's what we had talked about before. Yeah, I'm I'm off that. <laughs> <laughs> I worked on it for a couple of days, and I'm like, this looks bad. This looks bad. This they all look bad. I'm good. <laughs> Why is everything yellow? This is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> They're just like not good red threes, and yeah. like you you have bolt of courage and you have engulfing. Engulf. What's it? the one that goes so when it hits? Engulfing. It charges. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, engulfing light, and it's just not enough threes. And then like you look at all the other red threes, and you're like, uh. And then you look at the yellows, and you're like, okay, V's fine. Valiant thrust is fine. Take flight's okay. And then <laughs> after that, everything looks really bad too at yeah. yellow. And then and then I was off of it. <laughs> <laughs> yep i don't blame you and you just end up with so many like you get blues but then you're like i have too many resources now mm -hmm. from the blue minnows yeah but, it was hard to get a lot of value out of the yeah the blue minnows that you're tutoring up and you ran you run out of red minnows very quickly too yeah yeah it cards that give you the damage benefit for charging I really like so like um you know valiant thrust courageous steel hand if there were more cards like valiant thrust where uh, you know the the initial physical damage is low enough that you could run the little minnow but then it gave you like let's say it just costed more like two or three instead but you got even more of a pump than just plus three um yeah i think the deck would look much better and probably Bolton in general would look much better if that was the case. I don't really have a problem like pitching cards as long as the cards that I'm pitching for are impactful. And I think that's one of the problems. It's just like you, there's not enough payoff because the charge cards aren't strong enough. And when you do have bigger threats in your deck that you want to pay for, right now it's like non-light stuff. And that's not mm -hmm. going to help fulfill the other things like v and lumina that bolton wants to do so yeah so bolton missing some expensive cards yeah yep 
Cool. Well, I appreciate the rundown on these games. Uh, yeah. We can do some more next time. Yeah.